All right, this is number two on the ray diagram for mirrors worksheet. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure, we need to find our center of curvature. So we're going to measure from the center of this focal point dot to the leading edge of the mirror. And so we're going to find that it is about 2.5 centimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure 2.5 centimeters on the other side of the focal point and we're going to draw in our center of curvature. So our first light ray is going to go in and out through the center of curvature. Okay, so we're going to line up the top of the object, so the top of the arrow there with our center of curvature and we're going to go into the mirror and out of the mirror. So we're going to go in and out through the center of curvature. Now our second light ray, notice I changed colors, so you should change colors, is going to go in parallel out through the focal point. So from the all these light rays originate at the top of the object. Okay, at the top of the arrow that we were given. So we're going to go in parallel to this line right here. And the way that you know that you're parallel is that like this gap here and this gap here are about the same size. So make sure your parallels are parallel. We're going to start and we're going to go in parallel. Okay. And then from that spot, we are going to go out through the focal point. So we're going to line up where it hit the mirror with the middle of the focal point. Okay, that's as small as I can make the dots. Sorry, guys. You go out through the focal point. And we kind of already know where our image is going to be. It's going to be right there. So we could stop there, but we want the extra credit. So then our third ray is going to go in through the focal point. See, once you know the second, you know the third. In through the focal point, out, parallel. So we're going to line up the top of the object with the focal point and go all the way to the mirror. Okay, so in through the focal point, hit the mirrors, stop when we hit the mirror because when the light hits the mirror it's going to bounce off, it's going to reflect back and we are going to go out parallel, so that way is out. So we're going to go out parallel. And see how those light rays are all meeting up in about that spot? Now the last one is the only one you need your protractor for. Okay? The fourth ray is going to go in through the vertex. Okay, so there's your vertex right there. Okay, it's where the curve changes directions in through the vertex and you're going to make your angle of incidence equal your angle of reflection. So this is the only one you need your protractor for, but you're going to draw it going into the vertex first. So line it, line the top of the object up with your vertex. And this is where color coding is really nice because now you can see which <laughs> Which one of those lines do you want to measure the angle to? Okay, so we're going to line up our protractor so that it lines up with the vertex here. So see, that's the vertex. So I'm going to line it up with the T to the vertex and then line the 90 up with our principal axis. And we're going to use that to measure the angle. So this is... 8 degrees. 
So we'll mark that as 8 degrees. That's the green one. Remember, we're measuring to the green one because that's our fourth ray. And so we're going to mark 8 degrees on the other side. Just make a little mark. And then you are going to line up the vertex with that little mark you made. You're going to label that as 8 degrees. And there you go. See, they all met in that one spot right there. So that's where we're going to draw in our image right there. That's going to be our image. And our image is inverted. Okay, so how did I know to draw it in upside down? I'm going to draw it from the principal axis to where they intersected. So from the principal axis, and it's hard to see with all the lines, from the principal axis to where they meet. And since they met up below the principal axis, that's how I know it's inverted. And I know it is real because it was made out of solid lines and it's inverted. Remember, real and inverted all to go together. And it is reduced. And we can we could, we will later calculate how much it is reduced. Okay? So far, so good. That's number two.